Hi everybody, it's Dennis, the active trend trader. Are you one of the traders who has a difficult time finding great growth stocks to trade every weekend? Well, we've got the answer in today's video. Welcome to How to Make Money Trading Stocks and Options. We're going to cover three things. Our panel of expert traders has picked out three top shelf growth stocks that are setting up and ready potentially to trade next week. Number two, an analysis of the indexes showing which ones are strongest, which ones are weakest, and what the potential is for a move next week. And then uh, we'll also cover another trading problem or issue that you may be having, and uh, we'll provide an answer to that that will help you, one, maximize your profits and minimize your losses. So let's get into today's session right Hey everybody, this is Dennis. I want to interrupt uh, the session just briefly to let you know that I am a man of my words and we ran out of time today during the regular uh, session and I didn't have time to share with you that, that one important thing which was the secret of how to increase the probability of achieving your goals. Keep watching. I'll cover that towards the end. Thanks. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilburn, the active trend trader. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, as I said, my throat is a little bit scratchy this morning. And uh, if anybody sees Steve jump on board, just uh, let me know so we can ring him up. I do have his stock for the day. And um, I just want to say hello to, hello to everybody and ask everybody a question. Basically, you know, were you prepared... This is a great question, I think. Were you prepared when we began the week to give yourself money from the stock market when you began trading on Monday? And uh, that's a question that Mark Douglas asked in several of his books, you know, in making sure that we have the proper mindset to be out there and trading. If we don't, and he says, if you don't come back with a strong affirmative, yes, I'm ready to give myself money from the market. He says, answer the question, well, why? Why aren't you ready? And what do you have to do to get ready? And so that's what we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit today. Uh, um, I've got, you know, hold on to the end because I've got a, a tip on how to improve the probability of meeting your, your trading goals, if you're interested in that. Of, of, and so you may wanna have a notebook ready for it to take notes when we get down towards the end. So let's go ahead and jump into today. I wanna to say hello to our uh, elite panel right now. Uh, our elite panel is, is myself and Anil Parikh from Delaware. Anil, welcome. Thank you, good to be here. And uh, we're, Anil is uh, doing, some, you know, the stocks that we've been providing on a weekly basis are doing really well, guys. And, and I'm going to be uh, addressing it. I'm just basically kind of tracking them, just leaving them in place. Um, and, and I'm measuring it by as if we take a, a $2,500 investment in each, each stock and see how it's doing. And uh, I... Um, Right now, I'm just letting it track as if we're doing a buy and hold. And what I find out very, that's very interesting, let me roll this over here. What I find out that's very interesting on this is that uh, um, all the stocks that we've gotten into are staying within, you know, none of them have dropped more than 15% or they're at least gaining back. And so I want to evaluate this from a buy and hold perspective. Here's where we were last week. I, and so I'll be modifying the current exit date because we haven't actually exited anything. Uh, and I just want to keep a track of this moving forward into, uh, uh, you know, maybe at the end of the quarter, we'll do a rebalancing. Uh, but just to see how, you know, one, how it's going with these and, um, so anybody see Steve? I haven't seen Steve. So that, um, again, uh, Anil, well done, because I know that on your triple screen, uh, I love your triple screen, the stocks you provide, and I know that they're very well thought out. So, hey, 
if you want to maximize your profits, minimize your losses, active June trading was designed for traders just like you. We were really, really busy with a full-time job, uh, but we you know, provide a proven, you know, tested, proven, clear and simple system designed to show you what to buy, when and where to buy it, when and where to sell it. And uh, we want to basically save you time and money, uh, money from the aspect of protecting against losses and ensuring that you let your winners run. That's what we're after with this. Uh, we've been doing really good uh, so far this year. We have caught back up with the uh, indexes. And so what are we going to do today? We're going to do a market index, index uh, stock, uh, stock picks from both uh, and Neil and myself and Steve, if he shows up, I will throw out Steve's uh, stock if he gets on board. And then a, uh, uh, if we have time to do a real quick stock checkup. And then as I promised, I'm going to give you an example of how you can improve the prob probabilities of meeting your objectives and goals in trading or anything else in life. I think you'll find it very interesting. Remember that all the materials we do present are for training purposes. Traders should always pay for trade any new method for the risk of their own personal capital. Um, as I mentioned last week, first three months of the year, we're kind of touch and go. Uh, this is the trajectory of what I want my P&L to look like. Of course, a P&L is going to dance around your objective, tar you know, the, the target objective. And that's exactly what we're doing. But we, it looks like we are back in track. We'll see if we do, in fact, progress up and hit that. The, the straight line is it will take me to 40% by the end of the year. That's my target and my goal for, for uh, trading every year um, with active trend trading. As you can see, active trend trading, we're up to 12.69% uh, for the year so far, uh, slightly above the S&P. The Russell is still nosing out everything else. We'll see if the other indexes overtake the Russell. And uh, I know through our uh, through the compounding we do on active trend trading, we will uh, overtake the Russell by the end of the year. So let's go ahead and just jump into the indexes. So then we can take a look at the stocks that we're going to be taking a look. Uh, the uh, stocks that both Neil and I have. Again, really. Time out for just a second. I just want to check my, um, I want to check my, yeah, Steve said he was going to be on board. So, okay. Hey, here's the spiders. What's happening with the spiders? We had a pullback over the, over the, the first four days of the three days of the week, excuse me, because it was a short week back to the 20 day moving average, 20 day moving average and this uptrend line held. Now we are ticked back up to the upside. At the same time, we are right up against a level of resistance that's been in place now since when? Since back in May. Uh, will we push through? We'll see. I mean, we, you know, at this time, we don't know. Uh, we do know that what, you know, what are the things we do know about this chart? Well, we know that if I go to this high here, in this high, we're about at the same place, no negative divergence there. However, if I pull back into this area where it did make its high momentum wise, we do have some negative divergence going on. What don't we have? Well, well, what do we have, what don't we have? One, we are still working off of a, uh, a bearish engulfing pattern from the, uh, the first of, of uh, well, it was Monday, a bearish engulfing off Monday, that is still in effect. What voids that bearish engulfing is basically taking out the high of that day. So if that happens, uh, then that'll avoid that uh, bearish engulfing and could set us up to move on, you know, move higher up with the S&P. What's the upside target if we do in fact break out? Well, I like to take, and I'll just throw this up there so you can you know, take a note on it. I like to throw on the Fibonacci's and go ahead and grab that down to the bottom. That gives us a couple of targets on the upside. It gives a target up at 427.99. Just go ahead and round it up to four, um, 
and that's the 127, that's the 1272 extension. And then the 1618 is right there, 434. If we get a full symmetric move up, the technical target of, on the S&P, on the spiders at least, is up there at the 441 level, $441. So that's my upside targets. I really am not gonna project a downside target right now. And, and the main reason for that is we've got an uptrend line. We have a, uh, so I, and I don't wanna spend a lot more time on this, on this particular entity, but we have an uptrend line that is still intact. We have the moving averages, everything's stacked to the upside. So we wanna look at you know, trading to the upside. Now, what about the, the NASDAQ as represented by the Qs? Similar type situation. We break out above these highs, which is in the process of doing, we're right up against that resistance again. So on the NASDAQ, we may in fact void the uh, uh, bearish engulfing from Monday. And if that in fact does happen, we bounce where? Off of the 50 day moving average. And we could take this on, back on up to approximately the uh, 342 area. Do the same drill while you're doing your homework this weekend. I encourage you to do the same drill. Lay on a Fibonacci extension from this a retracement from this high here down to this low here, and it'll give you an upside target uh, for the Qs. You can also do that with TQQQ if you want to take a look at trading the leverage ETF. Next, IWM. Well, darn it. So now, Russell. Russell's being a little bit slow to the party right now, guys. We had a hanging man that happened on uh, basically on uh, two, uh, Wednesday of this week. Sell off. We're not quite back up to that level yet. What do, I, what do I want to look at? I would be more prone to trade the, the Russell to the downside, but where do I anticipate it going? Well, basically back here, either to the 220 level or the 212, 88 level, 213, let's say. And it's all going to depend on what happens here. We get a, and so right now, what, what has happened so far is we did get a intraday lower low here, right into the gap of the gap up. We are basically have moved back up. However, we are not bouncing above the high that was made this week, unlike the other indexes that are. What do we have going on on the, <clears throat> um, the weekly charts is what we could say is that we have some negative divergence and that we're making a new high or close to a new high but the momentum is not moving up to the upside. Positive side though, this is driving sideways. So while it may give us a tradable opportunity, the tradable opportunity would be just, I think back down here to the you know, 212 level, 213 level. And perhaps when you're in a range like this, you get a pullback halfway and then a rebound. That's a very powerful signal to the upside. So, Anil and let me see. Nope, Steve is not on board. So Anil, that's what I'm looking at. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm optimistic about the direction the market's going to continue into the upside. Uh, if if the market shows us weakness, I want to jump on the the uh, the Russell probably to to ride it to the downside uh, more so than either the Nasdaq or the spy, or the S and P. What do you think? On my triple screen charts, uh, everything looks good right now for the uptrend. Okay. So, so it looks, uh, you know, when on your triple screen, just a real quick question on your triple screen, uh, you also take in consideration your triple screen with the indexes themselves, correct? Correct. Okay. So, so I'm looking at uh, SPX. Dow, CompQ, and Russell, and everything's steady. 
Okay. Don't, don't have a cell signal on it. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So, well, let's jump into our, let's see. I, I hope Steve is okay. Hey, let me jump in. Let's jump in and talk to this, about the stocks we want to uh, go. How about if I throw out Steve's first and then, and then, um, then we'll get on to yours. Okay. So uh, Steve's pick was uh, NIO. That's the Chinese autom automotive uh, company. They're really big in the, um, in the uh, uh, I think the electrical vehicle uh, field is what they're gonna they're wanna compete with Tesla and all kind of stuff. Looks kind of interesting. Uh, and here's a good way to look at this is basically, on the weekly chart, go there first. We're getting momentum shifts. We're getting the TSI has shifted up off of this past support. It, it runs hot and heavy. It has run from 31 up to 40, almost 42 bucks. The TSI, the market forecast has shifted up on the shorter time market uh, momentums, but not yet the longer term. The uh, uh, what the one thing I would probably hold on, and I don't know where Steve would want to buy it. He might, I think he would, well, I think he would say, hey, if I break out above this level here, that'd be a, a good place to get in. Um, but we have had a reversal. TSI is up in the upper reversal zone. Now it can run along the upper reversal zone for quite some time. We're not getting any uh, reversal candlesticks. However, for me personally, I like NEO, but I would like to see it pull back into the moving averages or maybe back to the 200-day moving average and then bounce from there. It needs to take out that high right there uh, to be a valid move to the upside. Throw a fib on this real quick. What are we expecting it to go? And this just gives you a real quick projection to the upside. And so, yeah, it didn't give us a, a projection. Here's the one area here, 46.88. The 100% extension would take you up <clears throat> at 50, 56 and some change. So that's the that's number one. So, I you know what do you think? Have you been watching Neo at all? Uh, no, but I just threw it up on my triple screen here. Yeah. And I got a buy signal on it on 527. 527. All right. Let's see when that when, when, when would 527 be? That would have been Thursday of last week, I believe. I think so, yeah. Which is right there. Yeah. I agree. Everything is crossing to the upside on this. So that, this, I, I, I like it. I mean, I, I really it like good. it. Yep. I would be interested in buying it if I hadn't have already bought Ford. <laughs> so, Anil, you've got NEU, Nucor. That is correct. That's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. Yeah, it has a. I follow Ken Slim as well as Jaken, and it passes on both. And very bullish on chicken and hundred percent on chicken buy list. So, okay, I'd say go for it. So, would you buy? When would you buy? You we buy it right here, right now. Okay, right here, right now. So, actually, the, uh, I got it at one hundred six or something. Okay. And one of the things that I I like, yeah, Nucor. Uh, it does have weekly options. So if you're an option trader, this is one of those that could give you some really good potential up to the upside also, either way, because I mean, it, it's a $100, $108 stock. Now, what would be your projected upside on it? Um, how would you just, how would you ride this? If you're getting into this right now, how would you trade this to the upside? I mean, you know, what would be your, your profit targets and that kind of stuff? Basically, I'm, again, following the triple screen and the uh, signals. Yeah. So triple screen on it has come actually uh, fairly long time ago. But so it's the daily triple screen is active, weekly is active. 
So my profit target, uh, I, I'm looking for about 15%. Okay. And uh, triple screen signal. So if the triple screen sell signal comes, I would get out. Okay. Or at least get 15 and then see what the triple screen says. Right on. Yeah. So take off a partial position at yeah. somewhere between 10 to 15, 15% or so. Yeah. Is there, does Chaykin, uh, can you drop the um, Chaykin website in your, uh, in, in the chat to everybody? Yeah. Let, let me log on just a second. Give me just a second. Because uh, Barry wants to know who's Chaykin? And I, and I always ask this question, Barry. I, I, I ask the question, what's shaken? No, that's what's shaken. No, I'm just, sorry, <laughs> bad joke. <laughs> Let me see if I can get in, I'll show it to you. I'm chicken. So again, you know, part of the thing is, as we define, as Anil's going to get that and put that up. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to jump over to my 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 pick for the week, which okay. is H H Z O. I had this Dickens finding uh, something, and uh, I'm not ready to buy it yet, but I'm really darn close to being ready to buy it. One of the things, and this could be a really great stock to practice on. It is fairly low, pri low price. It's got excellent volume. It has uh, a, a good, and one of the things that I do is I run the, uh, uh, the stock checkup on it. Um, the, uh, uh, and so it, and when I ran it earlier, it looked really good uh, stock checkup wise. Uh, the thing that really interests me is when I look over here on the daily chart, it's been starting to move into a horizontal range. Now, when I say a horizontal range, it looks kind of like this. So here's our, here is the highs and here are the lows. And it is down in that area right now. We're getting a, actually getting a bullish uh, harami right now. If it held on where it was at, uh, the one thing that I don't like about HZO, it's Maritime, Marine Max, because it was going to be either Marine Max or Dick Sporting Goods for me today. But if we do get a reversal signal here, now it may drive sideways for a couple of different weeks until it does get a break. But I'm looking for what are my triggers to get into a trade on this? One, I want to see the TSI tick up. I have a really close, matter of fact, I may have, yeah, I've got a three line cluster on my market forecast on the uh, daily chart. Market forecast, when you get a three line cluster, typically I would say 85 to 90% of the time within one to four trading periods, this would be days, you'll get a reversal. So I'm gonna highlight this and just watch it. I wanna see it reverse first though. But it, it, but it's really close to, you know, that happening. Um, and I would also, you know, on the weekly chart, what's happening? I think I just put a, a nice little flag down, and so I can do a couple of things. I can either take the flag from here, draw a line here. Can go into a little bit more detail today than we've done in the past, simply because I want people to be ready to. So I'm just going to lay that flag kind of in there. You can see on the daily chart, it doesn't quite measure up. I'd have to move it over, but it does give me an idea. I've got that in place. In fact, let me get, let me get that out of there. I don't like it. And I would rather go over here and just do a fit and just to line this up over here. There you go, folks. Let's go there. And let's go to that high right there. So there's my kind of my downtrend that's happening. I extend that to the right. So it actually needs to take out that downtrend line before I you know, have at least the initial inclining that it's going to, re, you know, that's going to be a reversal. But I can also do the same thing here on my TSI. I can draw in my lines across that low there or that high. If it breaks that, and starts moving back up to the negative 42, 
that would give me my other indication that, ah, this is ready to, to rock and roll to the upside. So that's what we're looking at. So that's mine. Uh, how's this rate? How's that rank out? HZO for you, uh, Anil. Yeah, I think what you're doing here is good if it, ne it needs to reverse. Uh, on my system, it has a sell signal, which okay. is to be expected. And uh, I would be looking for MACD to reverse first. Yeah, okay. And then the I think the moving average will go. So, and that's, that's one of the things I am gonna be do doing a, uh, a new training video that I'm gonna put over to uh, 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 the YouTube channel, Active uh, Market Tech Talk. And Anil, what I'm gonna be covering that in that is, I'm gonna be covering the, uh, um, what it's like to have two momentum indicators and how you can use them better or how you can use them to complement each other. And the thing that I'm looking at, and I'll just, you know, I'll share it with you guys really fast, is the thing I'm going to be looking at is this. Uh, this is that same entity. And what, Steve, what uh, Neil's talking about is he wants to see the MACD turn up here, and it hasn't happened yet. Well, one of the things I've been studying and finding is the TSI can give us a little bit of an early warning of when things are going to uh, um, um, uh, move up and, uh, and then, then combine that with your secondary indication of the MACD giving you the, okay, yeah, we have moved up. So that gives you like two conversions of clues that the trend has changed. And it's time to get on board the, get on board the profit chain, profit chain. That's wonderful. Sounds great. Yeah, so I'll be putting that out. Let's see. Uh, Barry says market forecast looks like a stochastic oscillator. Is that what it is? I don't have thinkorswim. Yeah, Barry, the market forecast. I think they may have it out there on some of the other uh, 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 programs, but it is something that was developed back when thinker by some of the uh, traders at thinkorswim uh, uh, back a long time ago. When imagine back when it was. Uh, it was de actually developed for invest tools, but uh, traded through Thinkorswim. But I, I find it in a very good uh, thing to do. Steve's on board. Steve, I'm going to basically promote you, let you say hi. And I have the chicken site on, so whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, can you well can you just paste the link up in the. Uh, uh, Paste the link. Yeah, that that's that's a premium site. You cannot get on it free. Oh, okay. But if if they okay, but if they have the link, yeah, chickenanalytics.com. Okay. Here we go. Let me see if I can find it here. I think they get a 14-day free trial or something, but There you go. Does that look like look right? Yeah, chickenanalytics.com. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And you can just go over here, guys. And here, let me. Let's see. Now I'm going to send that out as a link to everybody, the panelist, and everybody. There we go. And so, and then the other thing I just want to cover really quick, uh, folks, is that uh, just to let you know, um, I uh, have rearranged doing the on the radar. I'm doing it once a week now, but it's not a live video. I'm, I'm uh, the quality of the doing it on Instagram just wasn't high enough. And so what I'm doing is I'm recording a, a swing trade setups on the radar midweek, and it'll be posted over to the YouTube channel. And so if, uh, if, you know, I encourage you to go over to the YouTube channel, you know, and hit the subscribe and, uh, and hit the bell and you'll basically get notified when I do post this. This past week, I had two, uh, both, I, I looked at swing trades on both Tesla and 
um, uh, and Tractor Supply. And so I encourage you. And, and also, thanks for going there and subscribing. I just hit over 700 uh, subscribers. And so I'm very pleased with that. Steve, you want to say hi? Hello, folks. I'm sorry I'm late. My apologies. And so uh, we already went over your choice, your pick. Okay. And so uh, it's a trade. Uh, I would probably wait till Monday to enter, but I think we're right at the cusp of a trade, alongside trade. Uh, we, we, we agreed. Yeah. And I basically said, hey, you might want to let it go back to the, here, I just put it up here really quick and then we got to close it off. I, I would, I would trade it above today's high on Monday. Yeah, that's, I basically said it, it you know, needs to either take out this high or this high over here. Right, right. There's a little bit of more resistance up there, <clears throat> but it looks really, really good. Or if you're a pullback trader, let it pull back closer to the, um, um, the, uh, oh, the 200 day moving average or the other moving averages that they catch up. Right. Which works also. So excellent. Uh, hope everything, you know, we, we were really concerned. We, we hoped everything was okay. Uh, I just got, just got busy doing stuff and lost track of time. Okay. So, Steve, well, guys, for, your, for your information, uh, I passed on. Neil had a buy signal on my system on 527. 527. Yeah, it, according to this system, it has officially reversed. So, and Neo also had uh, um, weekly uh, weekly options for the option traders who are out there. So, hey, just remember, uh, guys, if, uh, if uh, this seems confusing or if you just basically want, you know, don't have time to do your research over the weekend, join us for the top five growth stocks or leverage ETF autopilot trading system. Uh, I send out a pre-flight checklist which shows you exactly how I'm going to trade five top growth stocks and also at least two leverage ETF for the following week. So uh, find about how you can shift onto autopilot and it starts for less than 20 bucks a month. And uh, there is the, and the uh, link will be down in the description on the YouTube channel. Okay, here's this tip I promised you during today's session. Uh, that I'm recording after hours. But uh, what is the secret of how to increase the probability of achieving your goals? Well, one of the ways, and it's covered here in this wonderful book we've been reading called Atomic Habits by James Clear. If you want to know more about this book, there's a link to my reading uh, list um, down in the description on YouTube. So one of the things that uh, James says about the best way to start a new habit, when you think about it, Trading is a new habit that we all want to start. We want to do well. We're looking for consistency. We're looking at, you know, how to set up a routine. Maybe your routine, uh, you want to have a new routine where you go and you, you know, you set a time aside to go and review stocks on a weekly basis and you want to do it over and over again, but you're having a difficult time making that happen. Let me share with you just a really brief story about a research that was done in Great Britain back in 2001 where people who wanted to exercise more, and they took three different groups. One was a control group, and they basically just told the control group, keep track of when you exercise over the next week. And it was important, and they, wanted to, they didn't try to encourage them or anything. Group number two, they encouraged them, they motivated them, they told them the benefits of working out, and uh, then basically left them alone and said, work out during the week and just keep track of it. Group number three, they did the same motivation, the same uh, you know, encouragement, but what they asked them to do, and very specific, they uh, received the same pattern, but however, they asked them to formulate a plan and when and where, of when and where they would actually do their exercises over the following week. They wanted to be very specific uh, about the time of day, what day it would be, and the place. And they wanted to say it in a very specific way. The way they wanted them to say it is, uh, like they would say, when this happens, okay, it is I, on Tuesday at three o'clock, here's the key words, I will 
do my exercises and work out. And it was that combination of words that helped this group do better in exercising during that week than the other group. But how much better did they do? The two groups, group number one and group number two, that basically did not put together a plan, they exercised, you know, 35 to 38% of the group exercised. Group number three that put together a plan that was specifically shaped around when this situation happens, I will respond with this. In other words, it was on Tuesday at three o'clock, I will do a strenuous workout. 91% of the third group met their objective. Think about how that can apply to your trading plan and developing your trading plan, your routine, and making consistency in trading a standard rather than just a goal. I hope that helps you uh, trade better, keep going to the end, and uh, we'll talk to you later. And if you like that tip, let me know about it. See ya, bye. Gentlemen, thank you very much. It's been a, a good session. And uh, so I just want to say thank you so much for providing the stocks and just uh, I think the, the panel is working well together. And so keep growing the egg and trade well and prosper. Top of the hour will be on with back with the final hour for our premium members. So as we like to say, aloha, trade well and prosper. And remember, start building now. It's never too late to start working on your wealth generation. So and Neil and Steve, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank so, you, Dennis. So I don't know who that guy is, but he wants you to subscribe, hit the bell, and there's the new, new uh, video that will be up here shortly. So aloha. God bless, everybody.